I will start explaining the model and then I will try to explain you how how to export the uh, uh, generic specific, general specific C code. Uh, and then I will go back to the hardware and then I will try to explain you how to connect uh, pins and how it goes. And then I will go to the to the simulation and start the simulation. And also I will try to explain you uh, the the all the all the things what you get when you do the C code export. So we will open some C code. OK, so let's start from from the model. Uh, here we have a forward converter. So in this case, it's a typically it's a isolated buck converter. Uh, let's say it like that. So here we have a, a voltage source of uh, DC voltage source of uh, 400 volts. Then we have a converter and uh, the nominal uh, output is 12 volts so we are going to actually step down the the volt here the, the voltage here for that we are using some inductance and some capacitance to actually uh, filter this this voltage and also we have a uh, here nominal load so nominal load is around 33 amps and uh, we have here we actually we are actually controlling this uh, dc voltage okay so uh this is something that I hope you are familiar with. And then uh, we are using this controller. Uh, this controller is actually built from uh, from. It's quite simple. It uses the the PI regulator. So we are measuring here uh, the voltage output, and then we have here a reference value, and then uh, it goes to PI regulator and it sends the duty cycle here. Uh, of course, here here you can find some simple. Uh, over voltage protection uh, that I actually created. Maybe that's the it's not the best way how you would create it, but it's the only only for demonstration. Uh, of course, I'm reading also from this controller. I'm reading the uh, enable state, so uh, enable or disable the inverter, the 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 DC DC converter. Uh, I'm measuring the current, and also uh, I can reset all the alarms if there is need. And then, uh, from uh, as an output from this from this controller, uh, we get uh, we get the 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 duty cycle here that it runs in this case 20 kilohertz carrier signal with the reference signal of zero and one. Uh, okay. Uh, while we are waiting for this to compile, uh, if we want to export this. Uh, this this signal processing. So there are a few real rules that we have to that we have to ha uh, have in mind. So we have to uh, define all these names uh, of the inputs and all these names of the outputs because these names are going to be generated as as they are. We will have some variables called uh, vref and vmin and so on. And also, this name is quite important for our so because we are going to use this uh, to reference to. Okay, uh, so just weekly. Okay, I will do like this. So we have a software in the loop model. So if I run this, and if I go here, enable, I can see here some values. So we have around 12 volts out current. Yeah. And the cycle is 0 0.4. Okay. And uh, yeah, here I can zoom in, but it's quite standard, let's say, like that, uh, the waveforms. Okay. Uh, so let me stop this. And uh, let's go back to the model. So, uh, what is the procedure? So, if we go here, uh, right click at, at the C code export, we can find some settings. And there are a few things that we have to set. So uh, the first thing is to to select the the directory where we want to export this uh, this code. Uh, then we can choose a platform, but it is more related to to the to the data that we want to that we want to uh, match. And uh, let's say that we have here also type mapping. So uh, if we want to use integer, we can actually, yeah, inside in, in our tool, integer can go to, for example, u int uh, 32, uh, u int 32 t. So 
you can uh, do the mapping of the of the different data here. Uh, for now, we will keep this as an integer. We have unsigned and we have float, so I will go just OK. And if we want now to export this code, uh, we can simply go C code export and uh, do the export. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, here we can see that a few files are generated. So we have a controller.h. The first name is uh, related to the name of the subsystem that we that we exported. And also here we have a controller.c. So now I will I will open these two files and and I will try to explain you what 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 is inside. Okay, so if I go here uh, C code exported. Okay, here is the new code. Uh, okay, let's start with with that age. Okay, uh, here we can see that we actually uh, exported few few structures, and all these data structures. I hope you you managed to saw it. So they are representing uh, the signal processing uh, variables. Uh, and they are representing actually the, let's say, the the settings of that component. Not settings, but how to say inputs and outputs. In this case, this is the all inputs. So you can see that we have real uh, parameter, uh, all the inputs that we designed. And also we have here uh, all the uh, outputs. So outputs, as you remember, we have alarm, we have a duty cycle, M, and warning also. Uh, now, uh, later on, we have all the things. So in, in these things, we will have all the variables that we, for example, have on probes. If we have any probes, so let me just try to, to show it here. So you can put some probes here and it will be represented in the things. So because this, uh, this uh, component is actually sync. Uh, later on. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, here. And also we have here some states, so they are more more related to, uh, for example, all the integrators in our circuit. So they represent the states inside the signal processing uh, subsystem. So I hope that's that's uh, clear. Uh, for example, we have here these states of the flip flops, and also we have a states of the of the integrators. So they are just uh, changing over the over the time. Uh, also, uh, for all these structures, we have one main structure which is called a, a controller uh, uh, model data. Here we can see that the, here uh, we use the same name as subsystem, and in that model data we actually uh, encapsulate all, all these all these uh, structures that we have. Okay. And here we have uh, external external uh, definitions, and at the end we have really two uh, important things that that we actually define. That's the two uh, model uh, model entry point functions. So one is a controller in it, which which represents the uh, the all the initial states of the of the of the subsystem, and uh, we have here controller step function, which represents the actually everything that is going uh, that is happening inside uh, inside our structure. And as you can see here, we are actually uh, as an argument we are providing the the controller mod model uh, data as a as a structure. Okay, which means that we can use all these functions, uh, all these uh, structures inside these two functions. And also they are uh, void, so which means that they are not returning any value. And here external, which means that they are uh, they are uh, actually uh, defined external from this file. So let me just now back to the second file, which is also generated. As you can see here, yeah, we we generated another file which is called controller.c, and uh, this is the 
this is something that I already explained. So we have a step function that is actually defined here. Here we include the, the h file dot h file or header, and uh, here we are actually having all the similar, actually all the signal processing that we that we uh, described here. Uh, we are having uh, we are having it here. So just for representation, for example, at the end, uh, we can see that, uh, or let me see here, there are some, yeah. Uh, this is the code generation for uh, PI uh, controller one. And we can see here, I think this is, uh, this is everything that is represented here. So, this is actually. I hope it's it's not uh, not hard to read, and you can find everything here. Okay, and also you have a controller init function, as I said, which represents all the initial states of the of the controller. Okay, uh, perfect. So now the good question is how to include all these files in our project. So uh, I will now. Uh, uh, Jump back to the jump back to the our our uh, model. So uh, now, uh, as I said, this is going to be run on our DSP. In the model with the DSP, we are having only forward converter without any signal processing. Okay, so this is the second model that actually inherits inherits this one. So we are actually, let's say, we can delete all of this. Mm -hmm. And then jump back here, or we can just disable. I, I prefer to do something like this as well, so I can disable it just to keep it safe and change this to the digital input uh, instead of internal modulator. Okay. Okay. Something similar I'm I'm having here. So uh, we are using um, digital input one to set the to set the the gate signal actually. From the from the external world, and also here I'm having a, a output settings component. Here, as you can see, I, I'm using analog output one to provide the voltage output voltage of the 5.6 uh, with 5.6 6 scaling, and also uh, here it is uh, I'm providing also uh, on analog output. Seven uh, output current with the uh, 26.6 scaling. Also, I put the the lower and upper limit because this is the uh, this is the ADC reference uh, inside the DSP controller. So it will actually read from zero to three volts, and it is 12 bit uh, 12 bit ADC converter inside the DSP. So when I finish this, so I will just compile this model just to have it on the background and I will jump back to the to the code composer studio. So uh, so a few things we have to do uh okay. It's loading. Uh yeah, a few things we need to do. First thing is to actually include uh yeah, just give me a second here. Yeah, we have to include this C code exported file uh, just in case to have it have it all here and have all these files linked with the with the with this project. And as you can see here, here we have a controller C and uh, controller dot H, both of the, these functions. Okay. So uh, first thing that we need to do is to include this in our project. Of course, we have to include files in our directory and also include in our C C project. We have to do do controller dot age, and then we have to set some. We have to declare, let's say, uh, define these these uh, structures here inside our uh, inside our inside our project. Okay, uh, here uh, I have I have to configure uh, ADCs. So I have to configure two ADCs for for two analog outputs, and I have to configure EPWM uh, peripheral. Of course, in this case, I'm uh, running my interrupt on a, on a, on a timer, 
So every 50 microseconds, I think, every 50 microseconds, I'm having a, a timer interrupt. And I'm having this interrupt service routine that runs every every 50 microseconds. Why, why I use this timer? Because I want to relate the similar as we have here in our in our system. In our system, we have our signal processing that runs on, uh, let me see, execution rate. Yeah, it's a 50 microseconds. Of course, you can choose a different a different strategies. You can use yeah. a different uh, peripherals to run to run uh, the the interrupts. In this case, I use just timer. It's as simple as possible. Okay, uh, perfect. So as I said, now we jump in the main function. As I said here, uh, there are some uh, some settings for uh, GPIOs for uh, EPWM GPIOs as well. Uh, and then here we have a setup uh, interrupt timer, which means that I'm setting setting up the the interrupt uh, on the timer. And then here we have some settings of some LEDs on the DSP board. Uh, as I said, I have to configure ADCs. I have to configure ADC one and ADC two as well, EPWM, and and everything. Yeah. And uh, here I have definition of these uh, this generated model uh, structures that I already that I that I already initialize here. So I'm saying here that okay, uh, inputs. Yeah, I have inputs, output states that are all zeros, and I'm actually filling up the the generated model. And I'm running in in the in the initial stage. I'm running this control init function just for sake. So if you do remember, initial initial controller uh, controller uh, slash actually uh, initial is actually here defined. Yeah. Okay, this is the first time that we are actually calling this function. And as I, as I said, the arguments has to be this controller model data uh, type. Okay. Let's go back and then we run uh, a one while loop, actually one while uh, while loop that is going to run all the time. OK, so I I, I don't want to explain uh, setting up all these peripherals. This is something that uh, we expect from the customer to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, this is a EPWM peripheral. Uh, and this is this interrupt service routine. So I will just spend few few minutes here. So for interrupt service routine, actually this is the way, uh, this is the stage where we have to include our step function. Uh, first, we have to read all the parameters from the uh, from the ADC from the ADC converters, and use a proper scaling to to actually uh, to to fill up the the V output. Uh, variable, okay, and same thing goes for for this for for the current. So we have to read the the values from the ADC, and then use a proper scaling to to read the same values as in our simulation. So this is the first step that you have to ensure that you on your controller side see all the same values as you can see on the on the simulation. Uh, now on is actually we are feeding uh, feeding our uh, model data with the, with all the parameters that we get from our ADC. So we actually have to uh, set on the inputs. As you can see here, we are using inputs uh, uh, input structure to actually set set up all the VRF, V out, uh, I out, and some two GPIOs just to run run the uh, I'm using the the SCADA to run this controller. Here, here is the time when we need to to run the controller. So we are feeding, uh, as I said, all the inputs, and then we run a controller setup function, and then we can use these outputs uh, to actually generate the duty cycle. Okay, so. Uh, once when we have a duty cycle, we can uh, set up to the controller to the to the uh, to the comparator of the EPWM uh, peripheral, and in that case, we will get the duty cycle as we as we need. Okay. 
and this, that's the process more or less. So we have to a little bit to modify the model. Of course, there is a small problem whenever you want to change. Uh, this is that's the reason why I said it's really important. Whenever you change the name of these inputs or these outputs, they will actually, of course, when you generate the code, they will be a, a bit different as you as you change them. And then you have to change that the, uh, these inputs and outputs here in in your in your structures. Okay, this is something that is expected. But once once when you set up all these peripherals, you can you can play with this with this uh, with this uh, subsystem and then you if you have a, a standardized inputs and outputs then you can do here whatever you want and then you can just do lots of exports and you don't have to change anything uh, of course it is really good here that there is a possibility to link these c and h files and in that way once when you link them it will automatically pull the the new generated code every time when you generate the code. Okay, perfect. So let me now compile this model and try to try to run it. Okay, so before I uh, run this, I would like to spend a few seconds here just to explain the Hill interface board. Uh, TI Launchpad interface board. So that uh, uh, interface board that I'm that I'm using here, uh, and uh, here in this uh, analog signal routing, uh, if you do remember, here I use the oh, just a second. Yeah, I use the analog output set one and analog output seven. If I go here, so that's the ADC in fourteen, and ADC uh, A2. These two uh, ADCs I'm using, and for digital for digital inputs I'm using uh, digital input one. And if I go here, digital input one, not here, but here, yeah, is the uh, uh, EPWM one A. So this is the peripherals that we need to that we may we need to make sure that they are working. Or that they are properly configured, and then we can continue with our with our uh, development. Okay, so uh, I actually managed to compile this. Uh, let me just quickly uh, run this. Uh, okay, I have this DSP. Okay, uh, firstly, okay, let me just collapse all of this. Uh, first, of course, uh, let's run the let's run the model. Okay, here we can see some zeros. Uh, let me let me run model here. Okay, I have uh, inputs. Okay, so I run everything. So I will now enable the controller. Oh, seems like it's not. Oh, perfect. Okay, now now it's working, and here we can see some some uh, ve uh, changes on the inputs here. So we can see here enable is one. Uh, this is the current th around 33 amps, which is which is same as here, uh, which is same as we read read here. Uh, then uh, zero alarms. We have a voltage here which is around. 12 as we expect 12 volts and here we here we we can see the same thing of course now there is maybe possibility for some trimming tri trimming these these uh, scaling factors but still it's more or less the same and now if i want to to uh to let me just i will do the simple test of uh disabling and enabling uh, this this uh, controller As you can see here as well, so this this blue LED now is is lightning, and also heal device is running. And here, this is the the behavior of the 
of the signals. Of course, I can use uh, this uh, digital input one. And here you can see how these uh, how it actually stops stops with the switching. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, there is a possibility to change the reference. For that, I will use here this VREF. Uh, okay, yeah, it's here actually. So if I do, if I change the reference value to to five, for example, you can see that it actually change the change the measurement value so it actually changed to 5 volts here okay and also if i want to see the behavior i can do something like this and say 12 yeah and you can see the the ramp up of the of the of the voltage. Okay. And also for 12 volts, uh, we expect to have a duty cycle about 0 0.4. And uh, I think we have this sink. Yeah, it's 0 0.4. Okay. So uh, let's say this is the procedure. 